Welcome back. Glad you could come back again. I'm Mark. And this time around we are going to thin out our seedlings. We're also going to transplant a bunch of seedlings that are ready to go into three inch pots and we'll put those in our flood table. We'll also get that flood table ready to go, uh, hook up all the plumbing and the drainage and all that sort of thing and put them all in there and uh, show you how that whole setup works. Start out though with uh, thinning some seedlings. Check it out. So if you recall back in video one when we were putting the seeds in this rock wall, we had put two or three seeds in each one of the holes. Well, uh, on some of these spots, uh, they all came up and we can't have three in one hole, so we just need one. We're just going to thin these out a little bit. And there's lots of different philosophies on which ones you pull out. Uh, myself, I'm just going with the ones with the weakest stems and leaving the ones with a little bit bigger stem. Hard to, uh, hard to make the decision sometimes which ones need to go, but you only want one per hole, so somebody's got to go. You may recall that my germination rate wasn't very hot, so I went and reseeded a lot of the holes that did not germinate. And uh, so I got two different levels of plants here. The original ones, which are getting tall and lanky, uh, much to my chagrin, but uh, there you go. Uh, and then the second round, which are uh, nice and low, but are not really ready to be transplanted yet. So what I'm going to do is take the larger ones, the, one, the original ones that I planted, and put those in three inch pots, throw them in the flood table, and uh, we'll be good to go there. Wait a week or two on the smaller ones and then, then when they're ready we'll put those in the flood tray as well. Now we're going to hook up the 20 gallon reservoir that we'll use to flood the flood table where we'll put all the seedlings that we have so far uh, transplanted into the three inch pots. I use two different pumps. I use one pump that uh, is strictly for stirring the nutrient solution down here. I use another pump. This one is what pushes the water from the tank up into the flood table. It connects to this fitting here and when the, uh, the level of the nutrient solution in the flood table gets to a certain point it will drain through this uh, this drain valve here. I'll show you that a little bit closer in a minute. Uh, I also put an air stone in the nutrient solution down in the tank to keep the the water aerated and, and oxygenated so uh, when it comes up and waters the plants it gets a nice little shot of oxygen in there as well. I'll hook all this stuff up and show you this in action. So this is inside the flood table and this guy right here this is where the water comes up and this uh, we put in this little slot right here and it's got spacers in it. These are solid. This uh, allows the water to vent. And this will allow you to set the level of the water in the flood table. We don't want ours very high because the uh, the rock wool is only about a half inch off the bottom of those pots. So we've only got two spacers in there just to get it about uh, probably an inch or so off of the bottom of the flood table. And again we'll show you that real quick. All right, so we have the pumps hooked up. We turn the pumps on. Water comes up through here. It's draining down in there, but we want it to flood. So we put this, uh, this little guy in, and it'll flood the table until it gets to this height and start draining out. We'll speed this up just a little bit so you can see how that works. Well, that was just a little too high with this with these two uh, extensions on it. So what I'm going to do is take one of these off. But that's going to be too short. So I'm going to put a little bit of uh, duct tape around here, about, eh, about that high, and see how that works. So about that amount of duct tape seems to have done the job just about right. And I timed it, and it takes just over three minutes to flood the table. 
So I'll set my timer to flood once a day, at least to start, until they get a little bit more hardy, and then perhaps twice a day, and then hopefully by then we'll be able to move them outside. I'm using the a little less than quarter strength nutrient solution once again, because I got some real young ones and the uh, more mature peppers, but I'd rather be uh, low in this case than high. I don't want to burn them up. And here are all the seedlings that uh, we have ready so far that are able to go in the three inch pots. Ready to be flooded every day and uh, boy looking awful good. I sure hope they stay that way. One thing I did when I put these in here is I tried to get the tall plants over on this side and the shorter ones over on this side so I can sort of angle uh, my light just a little bit uh, to accommodate the different heights that we have going. I will also swap lights from this uh, four bulb T5 fixture to the eight bulb T5 fixture that's currently lighting the remaining seedlings that need a little bit more time to grow. And that's how I set up and run my flood table. Now hopefully next time around I'll have some time to show you some of the planning that I've done for my outdoor garden, sort of the layout of how it's going to look and how I'm going to run my top drip feed uh, system. Uh, I also hope to get to some of the uh, inspiration, some of the people on YouTube who I've been watching for a long time and uh, they've helped me a lot, shown me a lot of great things and uh, give you some other ideas on the ways that perhaps you can do the same thing but maybe not so elaborate, maybe you just want a real simple little system. Some of these other folks can certainly help you in that regard. So until next time, see you.